I'm Jono Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to learn how we can turn audio into MIDI. Now, if you're a singer and you have great melodic ideas and you're not a keyboard player, this is the video for you because you're going to learn how to be able to take recordings of your voice and the notes that you can sing and turn those into musical parts, which you can then assign to any of Logic's software instruments. So before we find out exactly how, let's just listen to the track that I've prepared in anticipation of this great technique. Okay, so we've got this sparse backing track and clearly what's missing is a top line. Now, I'm not a singer, so I'm going to be relying on Andre instead. Now, Andre is one of the singers who has been recorded for Logic's extraordinary loop library. And I've, I'm gonna be honest, I've sort of chosen this a little bit as a joke, but it will serve the purpose of what it is that we're trying to achieve. I found this little line from Andre, which I'm gonna bring over here and I'm gonna put this onto a new audio track. Now, if you're a singer, I want you to imagine that you have performed this vocal yourself and that you've uh, sung in the idea that you want to be working with. Let's listen uh, to Andre and see what he's got for us. This is the love. This is the love. Okay, well, he definitely sounds like he means it. Now, I don't want this lyric. Um, I'm, uh, you probably won't be too surprised to hear that. But what I do want to do is to take the notes of this phrase to potentially turn them into a kind of little horn lick or maybe a little electric piano line, or I could even put this on a synth part if I wanted to. So what we're gonna do is to find out how that's done so that you can apply this to files that you've made yourself. So you can see that so far what I've done is simply just to bring this in and put it on a new audio track. And what I need to do first of all then is to use Logic's flex pitch to detect the notes of this file. Now I can do that by coming over here and turning on uh, flex right here and then selecting flex pitch from the assorted algorithms that are available. And you can see that even though there are some effects on this vocal, nevertheless, Logic's gone through and it's found some notes that it thinks are represented by the melody that Andre has sung for us. So what I'm then going to do is to see those um, a little bit more uh, closely by simply double clicking on this region and making sure that I'm looking at the track view. And you'll see that flex pitch is represented up here as well. So you can see that flex is on and flex pitch is the algorithm that we're using. And what you can see is that the pitch of the overall shape of this um, file has been detected. You can see that every one of these blue nodes is showing the pitch that Logic has detected from this performance. Now you can see the little bend in this sort of uh, third note here, and you can see that some notes aren't bang in tune, so we could, if we wanted to, go through and just make a couple of timing or tuning corrections to this um, file, just to bring things a little bit more into line with where we detect these uh, pitches are actually supposed to be. Now you can see that around every single note, I've got a variety of different parameters available to me, including vibrato, which is controlling the pitch wobble within any given note. And if I click on that node, what I can then do is to adjust the parameter that's currently showing. You can see that as I drag down with my mouse, the vibrato amount is changing, and that's becoming a much more sort of fixed pitch than when it's full of vibrato, where we can see there's a lot of variation in that particular note. Now, at any note like the one that I've highlighted, where you can see that the sort of blue area isn't right in the middle of a note, is either sharp or flat. It's either, this note is somewhere between this note, which is F sharp, and this note, which is G. Now, if I think it's supposed to be a G, what I can do if I want to is to adjust its fine tuning by clicking here and taking this note upwards, and you'll get this sort of formanty kind of sound playing in the background as we listen. So I can drag it up to a G, or if I think it's supposed to be an F now that, or an F sharp, now that it's a whole semitone too high, I can just uh, drag this note. I can just drag this note down to the F sharp instead. And if I want to, I can go through and make a lot of different adjustments. I can even chop notes up if I want to by grabbing the scissors tool, clicking in the middle of a note like this and splitting it in half so that I can see that this kind of shapes a downward one, whereas probably the beginning of that note is supposed to be another F sharp. So again, I can sort of chop here and um, you'll see that um, suddenly we're creating more individual notes and therefore notes will move up and down as those individual bits of waveform detect them. Now, I don't wanna to do too much of this because 
Once this part is MIDI, of course, I can change its notes anyway. What I want to do is to create the overall shape of the melody and convert that to MIDI as quickly as I can so that I get to work with this as a MIDI file rather than as an audio file. So how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is to come back to the pointer tool and I'm going to come over here to the left hand side to the edit menu. And you can see that down the bottom, what I can do is to create a MIDI track from the flex pitch data. All of those detected pitches now are going to be turned into a new MIDI file and it's going to be assigned automatically to a new track, so that's just down here. And <clears throat> we can see that at the moment that's just been assigned to the electric piano. Let's have a listen through to that. So what we can see is that the overall shape of this melody has now been sort of double for MIDI. Now it's not perfect, but we can obviously now open this up and we'll see that the shape that we created and that we helped um, sort of create ourselves by moving the individual sort of points of this melody around a little bit, they've been converted into MIDI. And of course, straight away now that this is a part that if I wanted to, I could turn into a, a, a melody line. I could forget about um, Andre's vocals altogether and just use this as a, a sort of melodic shape, which I can assign to any instrument I like. I can swap out the electric piano. I could turn it into a brass riff by putting it on the track above. Or of course, what I could do would be to create harmonies. Now, in particular, what I might decide to do would be to say, okay, well, I've got a melody line and what I want to do is to be able to double that on a synth and maybe then move notes around to create a harmony part that sits with that vocal and accompanies it really nicely, but maybe uses different notes. And again, if I'm not a keyboard player and if I'm not putting notes in directly and I'm not comfortable sort of figuring out chords or um, accompanying harmonic lines, this is a really nice way to work in order to um, sort of turn any audio file into um, MIDI. So within this video, we've done precisely that. We've taken an audio file from Logic's Loop Browser. What we've done is to use flex pitch to determine or detect the pitches of that line. And we've then converted it into MIDI. And suddenly now we've got a group of notes which we can do anything with in terms of assigning them to different instruments or creating harmonies or new melodies of our own.